So we'll start with uh, Professor Vinay Sahasrabuddhe, who's going to be in conversation with our alumni, uh, Mahesh. And uh, I'm sure all of you know Dr. Vinay Sahasrabuddhe is a member of a parliament and Rajya Sabha. He represents Maharashtra, who's also the vice president of the Bharati Janata Party. And uh, the very interesting uh, part that we read about him was he's the vice chairman of the Rambo Malik Prabodhini as well, uh, which is, uh, you know, the only training and research academy for elected representatives and voluntary social works. I think, sir, that was very, very, um, very enlightening and very amazing to know. And uh, he has been an active participant with almost 100% attendance. I think that will be like a good thing for us and our students also to know. And over the last two years, Parliament has appointed him to the Court of Delhi University, to Indian Council of World Affairs, as well as a member of the Press Council of India. Thank you, sir, for being here with us. And uh, to converse with Dr. Vinay Sasrabuddhe, we have our own alumni from the 85 batch, VN Mahesh, who's the co-founder and COO of Maverick Systems. And with 22 years of experience in IT industry in area of solutions, design, delivery, and quality, Mahesh has a wide range of experience in delivering complex testing solutions to clients in Europe and US. So let's have all those complex questions to Dr. Vinay uh, Mahesh and look forward for an exciting session today. Over to you, Mahesh. Thank you, Lata. Uh, it's certainly a privilege to uh, talk to you, sir, uh, Dr. Vinay. Uh, for somebody who is uh, such a widely varied experience, not just from government policy, but uh, also on the social and cultural circuits as well. Uh, welcome, sir. And, um, Thank you for being here with us. Uh, now, to start this off, I think uh, I would want to go back, uh, uh, Dr. Vinay, to one of the articles that you had written. And this was very early on, uh, possibly just after uh, what we now see and call as the pandemic. And that would have been maybe a month into it, if I'm not mistaken. Sometime in April, I think you had written an article which said, uh, the fear of coronavirus will quite understandably haunt us for a long time. And I think since that article, uh, quite a bit of time and water has flown. And uh, I'm sure as somebody in, in government, there would be various things which uh, you faced with, including things like what uh, Mr. Gopal Krishnan referred to as, is this the opportunity for uh, India to sort of benefit and uh, become dominant in the 21st century. So with that in context, it will be great if you can share with us uh, some of your thoughts and perspectives as uh, from a government perspective on this as an opportunity uh, for the nation as a whole. Well, thank you, Mahesh, and uh, thanks uh, all the organizers of Sangam for having me here. Uh, I am a little uh, feeling awkward in the company of uh, so many technology giants and people whose name I have some time back heard in the context of technology management uh, and scientific innovations and things like that. So it's an honor, uh, really speaking, uh, to be here. Uh, in so far as the question is concerned and my article, which referred to the, uh, in a way, element of uncertainty, I mean, uh, about COVID. See, after all, uh, I mean, uh, social psychologists will also uh, I'm sure endorse that people are afraid not of uh, any, I mean, they, uh, certainly insecurity makes them uh, quite uh, apprehensive, that is true. But uncertainty is something more uh, serious, which uh, makes people uh, very fearful about the future because you, you never know, I mean, what is going to happen. It is like uh, uh, groping in the dark in a way. I mean, I mean, you cannot find a way and you you really cannot plan anything. That is something which is uh, coming to our nerves in a way. And therefore, as a student of uh, social, social science and as a student of governance, if I may say so, I think uh, there are three things which uh, have become extremely critical as to how do we handle affairs in governance, management and things like that on the one hand. How do we leverage technology for uh, uh, keeping the show going on even in uh, such uh, unfavorable circumstances uh, during the pandemic times? And also it throws a big question mark as to how do we cultivate or sustain 
uh, new relationship patterns because uh, societal relationship or the relationship between the government and the people or even our familial relationships have uh, definitely impacted upon, uh, I mean, they, they have uh, definitely been impacted by the pandemic. And therefore, I believe uh, these are the three things uh, uh, about which uh, we need to be uh, perhaps uh, uh, thinking about uh, and also coming out with some solutions. Uh, I believe that uh, epidemiology, the science of pandemics or dealing with pandemic also has a sociological aspect. And that in that context, I believe the sociology of epidemiology requires to be further uh, researched uh, as, uh, at a personal level, since I was also a victim of Corona virus and I was uh, for about 10 days in the hospital here in Delhi and uh, post uh, Corona infection. Also, there are issues which uh, in a way make you uh, look within and learn a few lessons of life as well. Insofar as the sociology is concerned, let me share three things with you. Firstly, uh, the, 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 the pandemic has uh, given us an opportunity to evolve a deeper sense of responsibility. Because uh, world over today, the talk is about individualism. And whenever uh, any person of my kind who is into organization science as well, talks about collectivism, many eyebrows are raised as if collectivism is a bad word. But I think the balancing between individualism and collectivism, it's something which we need to uh, learn from uh, the way we conduct ourselves during the pandemic times. Because if we don't follow the basic rules of uh, putting up a mask and washing your hands and also maintaining the social, uh, in fact, personal distance, it is not social distance so much uh, as such. And therefore, all these ground rules, if we don't observe, then it is going to impact on the society at large. And therefore, while individualism and individual liberty and individual space, all these things are critical, no doubt. But equally important are things about our social behavior, our conduct, and the idea of collectivism. On a different note, let me tell you, the, insofar as learnings are concerned, because pandemic times are perhaps the times to learn how to empathize with the victims and also with the uh, persons uh, in the margin, the uh, most deprived sections of the society and the uh, disadvantaged uh, sections of the society. Let me tell you that when you are isolated, when you are uh, uh, kind of confined to a room and everything uh, that you undergo uh, would uh, perhaps make you feel like that you are like an untouchable. And that should, in a way, on the other hand, I would uh, suggest, make you realize as to how the untouchables in our society in the past would have felt when uh, we are also experiencing, I mean, every section of the society is experiencing this untouchability because of pan pandemic, because of uh, distancing and so on and so forth. So I think uh, there are several lessons to be learned out of it. And most important is, to learn to empathize. Thank you, sir. And I think uh, when you refer to collectivism versus individualism, may not be as a versus, but uh, the belief that both of them need to have some balance. Uh, I think uh, some additional thoughts, if you have in terms of uh, India as a nation, uh, when you look at the perspective of vision for new India, things of that kind, uh, are there certain things that you see that inherently we as a collective society and a nation have got some positives or benefits which we need to sort of build on uh, given the current context? And is this sort of aiding us to bring out certain things which is of greater value and may not have been seen in the positive light so far? Yeah, I believe uh, naturally, I mean, uh, it should be a human tendency and definitely a tendency amongst these more uh, wise people, the wiser sections or the smarter uh, people, that we have to convert uh, this particular uh, uh, challenge into an opportunity. It is a challenge beyond doubt, but we, we will have to look at it and take it to our stride. That goes without saying. 
And in that context, if I look back last uh, eight months or nine months, maybe, I think the people have responded to the government uh, very positively uh, and has, uh, the, I mean, people have in general taken whatever the discipline that the government expected them to observe, generally speaking, uh, very seriously. I mean, uh, the leader, the prime minister asking us to uh, express our gratitude through a particular way. And I think uh, barring uh, some uh, people, uh, I mean, uh, murmuring about uh, or rather putting a question mark before the appeal, I think everybody else has uh, responded very positively across the political uh, differences. And therefore, this is something very, very encouraging that the society uh, behaves uh, very responsibly, generally speaking, I am saying. It may not be true in every other uh, part of the country. Maybe there are exceptions as well, but still. And therefore, uh, or let us take the example of uh, the migrant laborers and the way uh, they were uh, kind of welcomed in the villages, the way they were uh, rehabilitated by government and non-government agencies as well. So I think uh, definitely this is a positive side of the whole thing. At the same time, in our uh, in the four walls of our homes, uh, our family life, our personal life has also undergone several uh, changes in the sense we were behaving in such a way as if we cannot even uh, live without the help of the domestic uh, aid. But now people have realized that we can do that. So it's a new realization that we can be self-supporting and which is a good thing because uh, Atma Nirbharta is all about uh, self-support and that should start with an individual collectively and as a society, as a country, of course, we have to be going on that path. But Atma Nirbharta requires the Atma Pratyaya, which is realization of your own strength and this particular uh, challenging time has perhaps given us an opportunity to do that. So, and, I, and I think that sociological impact that you brought about, not just for possibly the underprivileged, but even for the, the rest of the uh, society, which includes uh, people who are on this call, I think it has had tremendous impact. But taking uh, one of the points, which I think uh, Dr. Pradeep also referred to in terms of inequality, and Chris talks about uh, the lesser privileged. Uh, in terms of uh, this as an event, uh, the, the potential for bridging the divide which is there between these two, uh, what are the, uh, the, uh, the, the challenges that you, you foresee? Uh, is this an opportunity to make that gap a little lesser? or potentially there are things that we must look out for to make sure that this gap doesn't widen or increase further. So any particularly since you've been very deeply involved from uh, the, the social uh, angle as well. Well, I think uh, the, the testing times are ahead uh, when uh, people will be observing all of us or we all ourselves also will be assessing our own society as to whether whatever we have learned during the pandemic has uh, sustained or it was kind of a temporary change that we accepted. Take the example of gender, for example. Today, during the pandemic times, many uh, traditional husbands have helped their wives uh, to take care of the uh, domestic court. So uh, if, uh, if that uh, habit becomes a kind of a permanent thing where people don't uh, attribute any particular... Uh, status or prestige related issues to the domestic uh, activities that we undertake, then I think it will be a, a, a thing which uh, we can definitely look back with a sense of pride. But if these changes are, I mean, if they remain temporary just uh, for the time being, then I think uh, that may not be really describing that we have taken the challenge to our stride. So that is there. And therefore, I believe uh, uh, we need to, first of all, understand what all we have uh, learned uh, from the challenging times and how we can, in a way, institutionalize the new habits that we have uh, perhaps adopted. Sure. Uh, 
I think when you started the, uh, uh, the discussion, you referred to uncertainty. And along with that, you, you mentioned about governance and management as being one of the pillars. I'm picking that up more because the subsequent two we either spoke about or technology leverage, I think, is an area which this group as an audience is, uh, can relate to a lot easier. But on the governance and management bit, I also noticed that uh, under the Rambao Malgi Prabodhini B piece, I think you've got your uh, stated ambition of addressing what you call the crisis in leadership. And I think Dr. Pradeep also talked about the fact that uh, maybe as a country in the past, uh, the, the leadership that has been shown and driven, there has been possibly a gap there based on which we may not have grown as well as some of the other uh, nations as well. So in that context, sir, uh, it will be good to understand what your thoughts are in terms of a potential leadership vacuum if it exists today. And more importantly, as, as a group of people who are part of this forum, uh, largely technolo technologists as well as entrepreneurs and things of that kind, what kind of role do you think that we as a group of people can play going forward to convert the opportunity that, st that stares at us today? Well, uh, I'll answer this question in two parts. Insofar as uh, technology and people who are dealing in, with uh, technological uh, challenges and things like that, I believe, uh, again, technology also has a sociological uh, aspect. For example, uh, the way we find everybody glued to smartphones, even when we are sitting in a meeting or even at a family gathering, uh, I mean, if smartphones are going to be more attractive than having a live conversation in a family gathering, I think something uh, is amiss in this entire setup. And therefore, we need to also take into consideration the sociological impact of technology. Uh, I'm sure uh, technologists are uh, aware of that. But let me tell you, let me uh, mention a different example how technology could be uh, used to find some solutions to our sociological challenges. In America, as they say, the millennials, uh, there are studies which point this out, are incapable of empathizing. They cannot empathize with the underprivileged or with the disadvantaged. So one of our uh, friends who is a, a Pune-based technocrat, he came out with a gaming solution. And he has created a game which is called as Real Lives. And when you enter into that game, you can play it uh, on your uh, smartphones or on the laptops as well. And once you enter into the game, you get a virtual life. And the life could be in Malta, in Cambodia, or in Vietnam, or uh, Fiji, or uh, whichever the other uh, countries. And based on those uh, socio-economic conditions of that particular country, your life progresses. And then you face challenges like famine, like scarcity, like flood, or maybe war, or uh, earthquake, and things like that. And then when you pass through those uh, challenges, face those uh, difficult situations, perhaps you inculcate the ability to empathize. That is the game, which I'm really very happy that an Indian has come out with this kind of a solution. And I remember Prime Minister Narendra Modi saying it uh, in 2014 at the United General Assembly, where uh, he said that this is my first occasion addressing a UN Assembly. And uh, I'm new to the international uh, affairs but I came across several groupings wherein uh, they said this is G20, G70, G16, whatever. But he said, why cannot there be a G all group insofar as dealing with humanitarian issues are concerned? So this is our approach of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam for that matter, or world is a family. And we need to work uh, towards that. That is my first uh, response. In so in so far as the governance uh, related issues are concerned or maybe uh, public administration and management science related issues are concerned, I believe uh, management science especially uh, required to perhaps uh, uh, apply mind to certain issues which I believe uh, are uh, ignored so far. I'll give you an example. Uh, we talked about leadership crisis. But whenever leadership science is discussed, 
within the limited knowledge that I have, I'm saying this, maybe I'm wrong, but leadership is considered only in the context of corporate leadership. As if other sectors in the society do not require leadership, that is not the case. Even in a family atmosphere, you require a leader. If you are traveling in a bus and the bus travelers, the passengers also require a leader. There are occasions where somebody requires to take an initiative and speak for all the passengers. So leadership like God is, I mean, the need for leadership like God is omnipresent. But our leadership science, whatever is being taught in the management classes, I am afraid, is very lopsided. It doesn't look into the political leadership, the social leadership, the situational leadership, the thought leadership, and several such facets of leadership science for that matter. Similarly, there are so many institutions in our country. And when I'm saying institutions, I'm referring to colleges and universities. But I have come across several uh, management institutions where their own management is in shambles, very unfortunately. So it, it speaks uh, volumes as to why we haven't uh, so far uh, thought of evolving a structured uh, kind of uh, no, uh, thought of knowledge creation in a more structured fashion uh, in the context of institution building. Institution building is a science, but I'm afraid uh, it is not being taught under the, tit the same title in any of the B schools or management schools in our country. So I think there are several areas which require our attention. And as a student of social sciences, let me flag four crises which I believe are uh, very critical and we require to deal with them. It starts with a crisis of purpose. The product of the crisis of purpose is the crisis of authenticity. The third crisis is the crisis of ownership. And the last one is the crisis of relationship. Unless and until humanity deals with all these crises efficiently, I'm afraid the bickerings in the society are difficult to be arrested. Thank you so much, sir. I think uh, it's, it's really been uh, wonderful talking to you and uh, uh, quite enlightening in terms of the width and uh, spread of the topics that you have picked up both from uh, social angle, policy angle, uh, as well as uh, from some of the cultural angles as well. Uh, I would now request if there are any questions, uh, uh, Lata, is there, is there something that uh, you would uh, have on your window which you might want to pose to uh, Dr. Vinay? Uh, nothing much of now. There's one question uh, which has come. Even in Malaysia, there are more investment in research, but why not in our country? Change of mentality required. So I think... Uh, it's quite much spoken about it too. Yeah. <laughs> there is a, Dr. Vinay, there's a question uh, saying any inspiring yeah, stories story. in this period from rural India or MSMEs? Uh, well, uh, I think there are many inspiring stories and uh, I came across that many IITNs also have played a big role in coming out with some solutions. For example, if I remember correctly, one of the group of IIT students had, had come out with uh, a mobile laboratory wherein with just uh, 500 rupees, you can get your uh, RT-PCR test done. Uh, at the same time, there are villages I know where the Sarpanch or the village heads have taken lead in providing uh, assistance to the affected people uh, collectively by uh, sharing or by allowing them to use the Samaj Mandir in their village, uh, sanitizing it, protecting it from uh, further contamination. And therefore, uh, several such examples are there. Uh, I, I think uh, if, we, uh, if, we, if we look into the responses of... Uh, uh, different sections of the society, including, as I said, the most poor sections or the underprivileged sections, there is a lot that we can uh, definitely get some motivation from. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vinay. Uh, thank you, Mahesh, for this really lovely session. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Talking to you.